What's up, dude? What's up? What's up? <laughs> Dylan just hung up. Come on back, Dylan. Well, I'm Big Sheeps. Welcome to the Sunday Sheepcast. Where, if anything can go wrong, it will. <laughs> Come on, Dylan. Maybe his phone died. Well, I'm sure he'll call right back as soon as he is able. <clears throat> okay, so um, this week we have uh, Jason Bowers. Hope I'm saying his last name right. You probably not because I usually never am. <clears throat> of Siopus, and he was also in uh, Behold the. I can't. I don't know how to say this either. Arctopus or something like that. All I know is that band played fucking crazy guitars. And Keith really likes them a lot. So, needless to say, I'm sure Keith is watching this interview and will totally be stoked about it. Where you at, Dylan? But, anyway, so, uh, usually at this point in the show, this is when I ask Dylan what he's been doing this week. But, Dylan's not here right now. And... My week was pretty uneventful, actually. I didn't really do much. What's <laughs> up? <dude>. Sorry. <laughs> Did your phone die? You're like, saw, dudes. Boom, blackout. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh shit, I forgot to plug it in. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> so, uh, next week, we have um, Lex from Daughters on. Really excited about that interview. And then the following week, we are doing... Um, we, we rescheduled the Knife the Glitter interview. So, got two good ones coming up. Really excited about tonight as well. Dylan, you remember that time we went and saw Psyopus? Of course I do. I would never forget that. How many times have we seen him? I know I've, I've seen him like twice, maybe. I think I've, I've seen, seen him twice. Time. It was probably both with you. They played at um, Orpheum. The old Orpheum. Do you remember that one? Oh, yep. Okay. Was that also a See You Next Tuesday? I believe. Don't quote me on that. Yeah, I'm not sure either. Because I don't know if, if it was with uh, Tony Danza or See You Next yeah, Tuesday. I'm pretty sure it was with Tony Danza, now that you're saying that. Um, so what? So what, how was your week going? It was good. This weather, man. I'm sitting in the... I'm probably not going to sweat tonight because I have the window open inside <laughs> the closet. And I have a nice waft coming through. You have a, a so. window in your closet? Yeah, dude, it's it's a walk-in closet. You think my fat ass is gonna sit inside like a like a single trailer closet? You know, it's funny because some some people did, probably didn't know that you were in a closet until you announced. Well, I'm in the closet, everybody. <laughs> I got my fancy bed sheet back here, fitted. 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 Uh, so, anything cool happened this week? Not really. I am uh, parting with my old-time friend here soon. I put my first car on eBay. So, 1974 Plymouth Duster. He was just trying to have me put my dart up on eBay. I don't think that's going to happen. Just do it. So, how does that work? Can they, like, back out of the deal after they win the auction or what? I guess anything could happen, but... I don't know. I really don't know how it works. I know they charge you to sell it, and I know PayPal charges you to... Yeah, it's like a small percentage, though, isn't it? I mean, eBay is like 125 bucks, and PayPal is even more than that. It's like 30 cents on the dollar. You can use Square Cash, unless you have to buy it through eBay. I, have, I don't know how it works. I've never sold anything on eBay before. <laughs> They want you to take it apart and ship it piece by piece to them. <laughs> Keith said he's seen Psyopus nine times. <laughs> 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 he 
He said not a fanboy or anything. Keith's the biggest Psyopus fan fanboy ever. Keith He's Opus. <laughs> Keith Opus. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Keith. Actually, <laughs> thanks for booking this one for us, too, Keith. Always coming through in the clutch. <clears throat> um, so if anybody doesn't know the format of the show, you can live, you can ask any questions you want live, and we'll make sure that they get asked in the interview, which is about to happen shortly. Um, if you could please share this video on your timeline or in groups that you know that you would like this to see this, it would be greatly appreciated. We'd like to get more people in here to ask some more awesome questions. And, um, I guess we could give something away today. I was going to ask you that, you know, it's, so uh, here, here's something that I was thinking about the other day when I was doing absolutely nothing. My first CD was not Creed. What was it? It was a, Creed was a gift from my parents. The first CD I bought was Bex Odele. <laughs> That's a little more of a pretentious answer. So, I know, I seriously, that, that was my first CD I purchased and it, it's taken me a while to think of it, but. What song's on that? Um, What's the Devil's name? Haircut. Okay. I love um, the title track on that one. Ramshackle. Is that the, wait, isn't that the, the the CD that, like, Windows Media Player made you have? Like, if you download Windows Media Player, you had a, some Beck CD. <laughs> it was, I don't, I don't you know, think it was he, that one. He had a deal with Windows Media Player <laughs> where they just gave you a free Beck CD. <laughs> it was like. You ever fucking wanted. Like, you 2 on your iPhone, man. That is the most annoying thing in the world. <laughs> All right, well let's uh let's give Jason a jingle, jingle here and see what's up. So how how are people gonna get a, a giveaway? Uh, smash no. If you share this post, if you pair this share this video, there will be a little list of people who shared this video. I will choose one said person to win a locust mini dick. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go grab it so I can show people. Whoa. <laughs> Grab the lo locust mini dick. Beck. Hello. Oh, hey, what's up? Hey, could you hit your video button for us? Yeah, I got it. And then I gotta switch my jump around here. Hey! We got it? Yeah, what's up? Looks great. Volume here. Cool, excellent. What's up? <clears throat> um, can Hello. you go ahead and introduce yourself for us? Uh, Jason Bowers, uh, drummer, probably on here because I played in Psyopus and called <laughs> the Octopus. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, what other projects might we know you from? Um, or do you, you know, have any uh, other projects going on, or? Um, yeah, I mean, I've done a number of other things. I don't know, kind of both before and and after Psyopus. Um, I was doing a band uh, called Pick Your Side for a while. We put out a few records. Got a band, Unwelcome Guest, that I'm still playing in. Uh, band Mall Walkers, I was doing for a while. Um, <laughs> had a, like a percussion duo that I was doing also. So there's always like a, a lot of irons in the fire. Right on. So, first of all, I want to ask, like, the most obvious question. How was it working with Chris Arp? Because we, we interviewed Chris, and <laughs> uh, let's just say, I, I kind of made the assessment after meeting him via Skype that his personality completely matches the way he plays guitar. It's just... <laughs> all, all over the place like he's he's nuts <laughs> yeah that's actually kind of i don't know if i've ever heard anyone like articulate it that way but that's kind of an awesome observation because like <laughs> as you as you say that um i'm inclined to like totally agree with you um <laughs> yeah working with him it's you know it's a total trip man i mean it was you know it's always a lot of fun when we do it but it's also like very manic and you know it takes a lot of energy and uh you know i mean well <laughs> um, you froze there for a second. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, as I was saying, like, kind of, you know, the energy that he puts off is like, you know, you also kind of have to match that when you're working with him. Yeah. Uh, 
so I feel like it's, you know, that that kind of sets the tone a lot of the time. It's just this really, like, manic go, 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 always work, which is cool, because it's, like, it's very motivating in a lot of ways, you know, and, and you can't really, um, you know, be dragging your feet, I guess, when you're working with them, which is... Contagious uh, work good. ethic. Absolutely, yeah. How, cool. how was yeah. it, like, writing drum parts to that kind of music? You know, that's just, it's very strange as it is, and then to be, have to, like, match music to it, it's kind of got to be pretty yeah. difficult. Yeah. Yeah, well, there was, I mean, the, kind of the creative process, I guess, was it was sort of on a case-by-case -case basis. It was very different. You know, there were, I would say the majority of the time, he would come in sort of with already, you know, like, you know, drum ideas programmed for a lot of the songs. So he's like, you know, he's been the, the primary composer in Psyopus. So a lot of the times it was like, hey, here's what I'm thinking. Like, you know, can you do this? <laughs> um, wow. Which is it's kind of a fun way of working because it, I know typically, you know, when you get together in a room with people and jam, you're limited by like what your kind of your current ability is at that time. Whereas if something's just sort of like, you know, conceptualized on a, you know, on a computer or whatever without a human playing it. And then, then you feed it through like the human mediator. Um, it, it just kind of pushes you to do things that you might not normally do, which I think yeah. is like cool creative results. And it's just, it's like some, it seems kind of like a backwards way of working sometimes. Um, but yeah, the results again become totally different from like just jamming in a room, and then. But yeah, we've also done that. You know, I, when we were uh, working on Odd Senses, I mean, I remember that summer we were just like you know holed up in a practice room for a long time, and like I said, some of them we had some pretty concrete ideas, and some of it was just like hashing it out. But um, you know, I guess it's like Psyopus. So it, there's sort of like a template already in place. You know, when yeah. I started playing, so there's certain certain things that you'd expect. So that kind of always informed whatever I'd be, you know, kind of writing or, or, or thinking of. And not in like a limiting way, but, you know, you sort of, you have a framework that you you kind of start with at least. Yeah. What was your uh, favorite release from Psyopus? Um, I think my personal favorite um, was Our Puzzling Encounters Considered, uh, which mm. I did not play on, but have played, you know, many of the songs live, uh, like hundreds and hundreds of times. <laughs> and I think that that's just like a really, I don't know, it's like kind of a cool sweet spot where it's, you know, it, it, I think it was like a, it seemed to me like a, a good step up creatively from the, uh, you know, the first record. And again, it was kind of like really, really pushing these limits and kind of harnessing this, uh, this momentum, I guess, that at the time that that band had going on. Um, and yeah, there's just a lot of like really cool, interesting, creative stuff. And I think it, um, I don't know, it does a good job of staying diverse. You know, I think one of the things which is like listening with to to this kind of you know technical metal or whatever is it's like so abrasive and so crazy that it just becomes a wall of sound after a while. And even some of my favorite releases by bands in the genre like you can only listen like half the record at a time, even though I really dig it. Um, yeah. Just because it, it does take a lot of a lot of work, and I think our puzzling is one that like I don't know some there's something about it that makes it like more of a like an easier listen in a good way i think than you know than maybe the the, the first record or the nonsenses so that was yeah. kind of like the sweet spot i remember the, the the first time i ever heard psyopus was live like uh i believe it was when back guys, booth. yeah back booth in orlando was see you next tuesday acacia strain um job for a cowboy job for a cowboy <clears throat> and i had never heard psyopus before that and i when I saw it like happening before my eyes, uh, I was definitely a fan after that. Just to see somebody with fucking bloody fingers <laughs> shredding harder yeah. than I've ever seen anyone shred in my life. Uh, yeah, I, I yeah. believe that Psyopus really took the took the show. And I mean, See you Next Tuesday was one of my favorite bands back then. So I mean, it was hard to to top your favorite band. But I mean, when you see it. So I, like I, I feel like I'm really happy that's the way I, I came in contact with Psyopus instead of just hearing a, you know, a, a record or something. Like seeing it live is is definitely the way to do it. It was just interesting. Um, so so Keith said that uh, Psyopus did a Canadian tour without Chris Art. Were you a part yeah. of that? I was a part of that, yeah. That <laughs> how, how did how did uh, that pan out? Um, I mean, really surprisingly well. Uh, it was like a weird, unique thing that you know I'm still not sure exactly how it happened or or how it went off, but it did. Um, 
I guess the story behind it was, well, before I joined the band, there were some members who couldn't get into Canada, and once once I started playing with Psyopus, we, we had a lineup that they, essentially, you know, we were all allowed to go, and that was kind of uncharted territory for the band. Um, so we actually, we did successfully get into Canada at one point, just to play like one or two shows in Toronto. Um, I had no problem crossing the border, like it was, you know, no hassle at all, they just let us through. Um, so then we went ahead and, you know, booked another, it was maybe like a week or a week and a half with, um, with Fuck the Facts. And when we went to cross for that tour, um, I don't know if they like scrutinized Chris's paperwork a little harder or something, we just, you know, got a border guard who was just not having us that day, but they wouldn't let us through. Um, so we went back to Rochester and like, I think we picked up a show that night and then just sort of had like, no powwow about how this, you know, we were really bummed because we were looking forward to going, like, finally hitting, you know, more than just Toronto and Canada. Um, I had all these dates booked, but we just, like, didn't really know what to do. You know, we had all been looking forward to the tour, and we had, you know, ordered a bunch of merch and taken time off of our lives and all this stuff. Um, I don't know who came up with the idea. It was either Chris or uh, it might have been Harrison who was singing for us at the time, but, you know, just... You know, pop the question like, well, what if we just, what if we just go the three of us without, without Chris? And I never thought Chris would go for that, but he surprisingly was just like, yeah, dude, I mean, I don't know, <laughs> go ahead, do it. Um, so yeah, we just uh, bought like a like a big muff, like a distortion pedal for the bass, and it was just you know, drums, bass, and vocals, I hope it's, um, and the tour was awesome, man. I mean, we actually like made a like a pretty lasting friendship with Fuck Facts on that tour. That was the first time that um, you know we had you know met any of those guys or seen them play. Um, and I'm still like good friends with with a few of those guys. So it's like that was a really awesome positive thing that came out of it. And um, yeah, it was fun. It was super weird, but <laughs> but a really fun time. <laughs> was there like mixed reviews about that? Like, did were people upset or did everybody just um, really seem to like it? No, I mean the. Yeah, the the response was like surprisingly positive because again, I think since Psyopus had never you know hit those markets before, um, people were just stoked anyway. And I know that's like you know border stuff is a pretty pretty common thing. So yeah. I, I think they they were kind of like you know understood it and weren't you know angry at us, but were just kind of like appreciative of the fact that we like tried there and to make something happen, you know. Right on. Um, no, no, I would appreciate that too. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to remind everybody: if you um, if you share this video, you are in a drawing to win this Locust mini disc. Nice. Oh, that's cool, man. Square. Yeah, just don't put it in your car CD player because you'll never get it out. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I I made that mistake. So I had. Um, this Bjork box set that also had like a small like three inch C D or something that this is like, you know, I don't know when, you know, ten, fifteen years ago, but I went to put it in my computer at the time that had a you know, just it was like a car C D player, you just pop it in. Yeah. So I could load it on my um you know, on my iPod and just like not thinking, it just popped it in there and then it was donezo. <laughs> like I was the end of that. So. Just forever stuck listening to Bjork. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, well, I got a couple the thing, so I got a couple questions on the Facebook live feed. Uh, John Whiston has three questions to ask, so I'll ask them separately. No. Uh, has much new Behold the Octopus music been written since you joined, and have you been involved in much of the writing process? Um, yeah, so when we started, or when I started playing with them, um, there were a handful of tunes that were already mostly written, but had never been either like rehearsed or played live or recorded um but we did finally we put that out sometime last year i think it was about 20 minutes worth of music we put out like a a record that was you know somewhere in between i guess a full length and a and an ep um and then since then we've been working on brand new stuff um it's always it's slow going just because the nature of that band like how difficult the material is how hard is it to you know it is to compose and put together, but uh, yeah, it's coming. I mean, we're you know regularly working on it, but it's hard to say when it uh when it'll come together or be to some form of completion. But you kind of answered the second question, which was how difficult are you finding the band's music to learn? It always seems to take a few years for anything to happen. So <laughs> very um, difficult. That the behold stuff actually is a bit 
easier to learn, I think, in a way than some of the Psyopus stuff, because it's already, you know, the way that Colin and Mike, you know, compose or have composed in the past is, um, you know, using like a, a program. So there's like sheet music for it, basically, which is easy for me to just take and learn. Um, whereas with Psyopus, there was always like this additional step of like, okay, I've got to like listen to this stuff figure out what the hell's going on um which is always a very like you know a very time consuming thing so in that way like the the behold stuff is kind of you know easier relative to Psyopa stuff because it sort of just eliminates that one step um but that being said it's you know structurally it's just all over the place <laughs> so to commit it to memory is like uh that's what takes the most time for sure how did you get involved in technical drumming like this um, I don't know. It's a good question. I guess like when I was, you know, younger. I mean, I'd say I guess like maybe Tool is like the first band that I listened to younger right. that kind of got me into the like the technical side of stuff. Um, <clears throat> so that was sort of my my starting point. And I just really, I don't know, something about like you know changing time signatures and like things I couldn't really like quite put my finger on or find a beat. Just really, I found it super interesting. Um. And then from there, yeah, it kind of graduated to like, you know, then you hear like Dillinger Escape Plan. It's like, I was just like this like much faster version of like yeah. this crazy stuff going on. So, um, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe Tool, Tool gets all the credit for me. Danny carrying a Tool. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the drumming is insane for sure. It's just, yeah. my brain doesn't work like that, I guess. But I, it's just weird. You know, you think fours and you're top fours your whole life. And then all of a sudden you hear stuff like this. It's just, <laughs> yeah, it's, I think it's that, wild. That's why... That's why it, it like always grabbed me is because it just it was something so different just catches your attention you know your your brain's locked into like a certain pattern and you're just used to hearing and feeling things and then there's like a hitch in it all of a sudden you're kind of like oh what was that and then I don't know I guess just curiosity you want to figure out like what what the hell is that why doesn't this sound like everything else why does it like feel weird and sound weird to me and it just sort of opens the wormhole so when I when I think of music like this I just think of somebody like mouthing what they want it to sound like you know like here's the guitar riff and just <laughs> You know, that's that's, that's kind of what so, it makes it it's, yeah, funny. I think and that's, then, uh, that's his, like the funniest shit in the world when you're in a band and you're just like, no, dude, the part is like, uh, <laughs> yeah, you're just kind of like scanning like the guitar parts and the drum parts, and it's, uh, I think we've all all been there. <laughs> and then his third question was, uh, are you into much of the dissonant metal from New York, like was that fire, pyron, artificial brain, etc. Oh yeah, I mean I don't I haven't listened to too much of it actually. Um, I don't know. I feel like whenever I'm playing a lot of metal, I tend to not listen to a lot of it. So then it's like when I step out of it for a while, then I start reaching yeah. out for for new stuff. But I'm familiar with uh, with a few of those bands. Actually, just mostly through Octopus because those guys are all buddies. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean there's a lot of, a lot of really really cool stuff going on, but I haven't dug in totally yet. <clears throat> um. So. What was one of the reason, or what was the reason that the uh, the world is flat song never made it to odd senses? Um, oh god, yeah, I forgot about that song. <laughs> um, I think it was. I don't even think we recorded that during the odd senses sessions. I think that was something we did, kind of like in between tours. Um, god, I don't know. I'm reckoning. <laughs> feel like my memory is disappearing i think what we had done is recorded like a hank three cover and and that song with the intention of like maybe doing a, a seven inch or a vinyl release at some point um but yeah we just kind of like threw it together between tours and then uh i don't know i not even sure like ever was fully finished you know i think like, i know we recorded the whole thing but like a finished version of it yeah <laughs> yeah uh, but so I guess the, the answer to the question, I guess, it's just it wasn't, it was from a different, you know, written after Odd Senses was all, all done. Um, I, one of the questions from Keith is, uh, what is the status on Pick Your Side? Oh, um, I don't know, I mean, I never, I never want to dead anything or say, like, it'll never happen again, because, like, what's the point? But, um, probably, <laughs> probably nothing's gonna, gonna go on. I think... <laughs> I don't know, like uh, Jeff, who was singing in that, he got, some of his old bands kind of got active again, um, so he's, you know, that kind of took some time away from Picky Side, and then I I moved, I left Buffalo, so 
like then it became a proximity thing. <coughs> um, so yeah, we just kind of just sort of like organically like faded out. Um, but we're still buddies with all those guys and in touch with them, so it's the kind of thing. I don't know, but you know, someday it might happen again. But as of now, there's nothing uh, nothing on the schedule. <clears throat> Um, another question from Keith was, "Why can't Cyopus keep a bassist? What happened? <laughs> what happened with Mike Horn, Brian Kelly, Brent Glover, and Travis Morgan all within 2009?" Uh, I mean, I wish I knew the answer to that question. Probably would have saved saved us a lot of frustration. Um, <laughs> I know because I know that's that's one of the, when we stopped really touring heavily. That was part of it, as I think. Especially for Chris, was like trying to find people that could play the stuff and then teach him the songs like over and over again in such short proximity, and I had that kind of that wore on him in particular because it was sort of his you know his responsibility. Um, but even like you know for myself, just playing with a new bass player like every month, you know it's kind of you get used to you know the way someone plays and you find certain right. things you like about him, and then it's just like then it's gone. Um, but as to why, I mean, I think it's. I don't know, you know, life stuff, you know, life, life gets in the way, you know, I think some people, I don't know, we, we, it's like once you get out on the road and really start doing it, you kind of realize what that life is like, Yeah. and it may not, may not be what, you know, you're into personally, and I think that's, that's just kind of like a reality of it, especially for a band like Psyopus that's just going, going, going all the time, it's like you literally had to drop your entire life, um, and like you know, do it a hundred percent to Cyopus. And if you know you have other stuff going on in your life that you want to keep involved, it becomes this like crazy, crazy balancing act. So I think <laughs> that's like that's like a general idea. You know, I, th I think why we had so many people come and go. It's why I was bass players that I could not tell you like, <laughs> that particular position. <laughs> <clears throat> Is there anything? In the was it? Zone? Yeah, I had a question. Um, did you guys do any a lot of improv jamming on stage, or was it mostly everything that was just rehearsed? Oh, no, it was all rehearsed. I mean, any improv, I mean, there were times when we just kind of like, you know, fuck around if we were having fun or something. But I mean, all the songs that, you know, like you're hearing yeah. the Psyopa set, it's all like, you know, very like, you know, strictly written and rehearsed and it's, you know, the way it is on the records and, and that kind of thing. So it's awesome. like, yeah, yeah, there's not a lot of room for improv, at least as, you know, <laughs> as far as I know, in that kind of stuff, you know. Yep. Uh, Soybeans asked um, some questions about Chris, which we covered in the beginning, but um, said, how much does he, does Chris Arp really love snare drum hits? Love snare drum hits? <laughs> <laughs> Listening to your yeah. demos versus drumming, and you've managed to stay pretty true to how they were originally written, which I assume was by Chris. I've always wondered if it was intentional or not. Uh, sorry, what was that, that last part about the... The, the snare drum hits. Yeah. Between the demos versus your drumming. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of what I end up playing is, is fairly true to the demos. You know, like I said, when we get in a room together and kind of hash it out, like there are adjustments made. But I think a lot of that comes from, you know, I guess, I mean, kind of from this band Lethargy that Chris was always super, super into. And it's, um, you know, Braun from Mastodon was the drummer in that band. And that's, you know, if you're familiar at all with his drumming, it's just this kind of like, this like sort of awesome flow of just like constant like you know snare drum like 16th and 32nd notes that are like interspersed here and there. And I think when Chris was like writing drum parts, I think he, he takes a lot of inspiration from that. Um, and yeah, just the nature of I don't know like technical metal and, and death metal and like you know if you're playing blast beats, you're hitting you know thousands of snare hits all the time. So <laughs> I think that part of that too, I think it's just kind of like genre of convention, you know. Um, and yeah, just when and on the records and stuff too, just I know the way they're they're mixed and everything, it's like the snare is really really present. So it's you know, it was I think a lot of like more I don't know. There's some like you know death metal and grind records where like the snare tends to get lost a lot, and I think all you hear is like you know kick and the cymbals. And I think an effort was made to really like balance that out. So it and it may be like sometimes it's like dialed so much like the other way. So then it's like all you hear is snare. <laughs> Did you play with a traditional five key, five set five piece kit? Uh, yeah, I was always five piece. I would do a like snare rack tom and then two floor toms and then mm -hmm. a kick it was yeah and then just a bunch of a bunch of cymbals. <laughs> Did you ever get sponsored? Um, yeah, Peisty actually. I was, uh, oh, cool. Yeah, had a deal with Peisty. 
I still, still do it, yes. <laughs> I, haven't, uh, I haven't talked to him in a while, but... Um, but yeah, that was the only the only sponsorship. A uh, question from Keith was, <clears throat> which Odd Senses song did you play Marimba on? Oh, that was uh, Imogen's Puzzle Part 3. That was a pretty pretty wild thing we did. Um, I, I, I can't even remember the whole process, but, you know, I, I played this marimba part, you know, so it was written, and then I learned it backwards. Yeah. And recorded it backwards. So then, um, in mastering, it was, like, flipped around again, so it sounds the way it was originally written, but it has all these, like, reverse... Like this reverse yeah, swell yeah. effect on every note, so it sounds like a weird synth or something. It doesn't even sound like a marimba on the record, um, which I think is, it's pretty cool, you know. But it is like almost unidentifiable as a marimba, and that was a really weird and hard thing to do. Um, yeah, just to like yeah, learn this this piece of music backwards, you know, and you kind of already have it in your head one way. Like it feels like totally unnatural because you're not, <laughs> you know, you're st- sort of play, playing. Could you still it play it t- right now? Yeah. Or, no, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> so after learning it forward and backwards, it still didn't stick. Uh, no, no, but it goes goes out as quickly as it comes in sometimes, you know. <laughs> and that's one that it's like you know I never did it live or anything. It was just like I just learned it for the record. So, um, yeah, you know, cool. that didn't get as ma- as many reps as like all the other stuff. <laughs> so it didn't. It, it wasn't embedded in there as a uh, as strongly. I, I think it'd be really cool if Flyopus did had done a release of just all the puzzles like put together you know what i mean yeah i that definitely would have been cool i mean again that's to me that sounds like a cool like potential vinyl release yeah like, i was exactly. always pushing for that just because i'm like a vinyl collector and, and you know at, at the time i collected a lot of records and that was just kind of like an obvious thing to me like with like a, a, a hole in the psyopa stuff is like why, <laughs> why don't we have any of this on vinyl or like you know chris had this pretty rad idea when we were doing Odd uh, senses about there's like one of the tunes on there, um, you know, sort of has all these like little like miniature songs in it. Um, and he had this idea of, of taking that and like having like an accompanying like something really elaborate, like the liner notes or a book or something, yeah. and doing like a you know a seven inch of that tune and then this like elaborate book to accompany it. Um, which I, yeah, I thought that would have been, been totally awesome, but it's like, yeah, for whatever reason, it's I don't know if we just you know. It kind of fell by the wayside because we were just busy like touring and playing or if uh, just no one was interested in putting that kind of thing out at the time or you know you know investing the energy was, into it even if it was still released now like if it was compiled and released now it would still do extremely well like because <laughs> i know there's like a lot of people still really love psyopus and like if it was to be released i know that it would all of it would sell it would definitely sell because it'd be like a collector's <laughs> item you know yeah and I mean, that's, I just like think it would be cool to have like a, a physical document of some of that stuff. Um, that's like one thing that I always like about, you know, or the, I usually am pretty adamant about what I'm doing a band is like at, at the end of it, I want there to be something tangible that like, you know, I can have like, you know, just document, hey, here's what we did. Yeah. You know, whether yeah. anyone wants, anyone else wants it or not, it's like, you know, whatever. But I would, you know, just like to have something like that. And with, I don't know, CDs are just, like, pieces of plastic, and, you know, digital is, you know, it's nothing. <laughs> so, um, yeah, even just me personally, I think it'd be, it'd be, you know, if something like that eventually came out, it would just be, be fun to have that, that kind of physical documentation of it. <clears throat> uh, anything in the comments, Dylan? Uh, Sean asks, duct tape is by far one of the most artistic music videos I've ever seen. Who came up with the direction and the production of it? The, that would be a question for Chris. He, he handled... All that kind of stuff. I think it was all. I think it was somebody in Europe, and I think they got in touch with with Chris about it. Um, you know, either like, hey, I have this idea, I'd like to make this, or, or something like that. But Chris would know the details on that. I don't have an answer, unfortunately. <clears throat> oh, who, nice. who, who could that be? <laughs> Hello? Hi, I wanted to talk to Jason Bowers. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> this sounds like an obvious shut up already. <laughs> Hello? Uh, <laughs> oh, sorry, hold on, you can't hear him. <laughs> I forgot. Oh. <laughs> um, oh. Yeah, I don't, know, I don't know how I'd be able to make you be able to hear him. <laughs> <laughs> 
because he's in my headphones and I don't have a regular thing. But here, oh, maybe, you, maybe you try this. Well, you have two headphones, hello? you know. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I, I can hear. I can hear Chris. So he, he can hear you. Even if he, even if he can can't hear me. me. Yes. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. <laughs> oh, hi. Hi. My, my name's John Brady, and I wanted to. I wanted to ask Jason something. Um, oh, he can hear you. Go ahead. Can, can, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. My name's John. Um, I was wondering if, if you could tell me who your favorite member of the New England Patriots is. Your favorite member of what? Oh. New England <laughs> Patriots. <laughs> this is gonna start. This is gonna segue into a, a, a sports does, podcast. Does he have a favorite now. member of the New England Patriots? Uh, of course not, man. He says he, he does Only, just he does yeah, Only oh, hatred. Oh. Only um, hatred for the Patriots. Okay. Is, it, um, <laughs> is it true that um, Chris Harp? Uh, that Chris Harp what? Okay. Wait, wait, okay um, uh, is, it, is it true that? <laughs> Chris Harp um, couldn't drive for shit when it was dark out and raining. Uh, I don't know. Probably better than I could. I guess I wasn't. So it's hard to drive a van on a trailer <laughs> in the dark and rain. He couldn't see though. That was the thing. Wait. Chris needed. He didn't realize he needed glasses until uh, <laughs> until well into the tenure of our friendship. Uh, why don't you? Okay, well, why don't you give us a call can, on Skype? All right. Um, well, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> Let's yeah, turn into a turn into a Brady bunch. I, thing I really don't. Get... Are you? <laughs> just go ahead and log into Skype because I, st- I still have your information. I'm logged in. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I didn't think I was gonna get this, this bonus you? friend hang tonight. Uh, I'll just toss you in right now. Do you still talk to Chris on a regular basis? Uh, yeah, we're in touch. I mean, it's, it's been a while since we've talked, but just times like this, when you least expect it. You get a <laughs> phone call, text message. Oh, looking good, man. Hey, Dooter. Uh, what's up, man? How are you? Dude, I'm fucking feeling great after the game today, man. Nice. I was there. I went to the game. Oh, you went to the game? I was at the game, yeah. No shit. That's... Yeah. Dude, I, I, <laughs> I, like, almost started crying at the end of the game. Like, it was... I know, it was... It was amazing. Big, big <laughs> win, man. Who would have thought? Oh, wait, hold on. I've got, like, shit going everywhere. Um, wait, I'm, like, hearing, like, delay. Wait, do I have to kill something here? Uh, maybe wait, throw some on. headphones in. That might work for you. I, I just killed the, the video that was coming through, so I'm still here. All right. Um, yeah, dude, that was fucking great today. Like, Tyrod is actually playing pretty fucking good. Um, like, I'm, I'm, like, waiting any time now for, like, you know, a McDermott to call me and be, like, their slot receiver. Because, like, it, apparently they're just calling people Dude. off from the road. And hey, man. Doing... You can, can, you run a, can you run a route? That's all you need. <laughs> yeah, you all I need to do is show up on something, you know? Like, <laughs> otherwise, Darius is gone. So, isn't that beautiful? Like, I was listening on WGR 550 today. And they are like, all right, at the beginning of the season, they got rid of, um, you know, Darby. And they got rid of um, Sammy Watkins, and now they just got rid of Darius, like, and like all the big names are gone, and we're doing better than we probably. Had yeah, in, like, clean the house, man. Years. Just cutting, cutting dead weight, cutting huge contracts. It's great. I mean, I know. I'm, I'm so fucking stoked. Yeah, and like, uh, we, we still have to play Indianapolis. We're probably going to kill Miami both times when we're playing new, uh, uh, the Jets this Thursday. So yes, like, think, we might actually go to the playoffs I, this year. I think. I mean, come on, knock on wood, man. Don't say we. I always say this this time every year. You know, when we're four and two, it's like oh, we could actually do it. But five more wins. I think if we five more wins, I think that's the, the right. Number. Yeah, and and not for nothing. I, mean, I remember doable, it's doable. It is with a, a like it's um it's kind of nice that we don't see New England to like the last quarter. <laughs> you know, because that would just I don't know. It might be it might hype us up a little bit to get groove yeah. and, and that go makes the way those games we, pivotal. Yeah. So the funny, um, so the funny, funny, so funny I, I had a couple thing that you guys should know. Yeah. What was that? Is, I said a funny thing that you guys should know is that before Mike and I started playing the band, Chris couldn't give a fuck about football. And now, <laughs> listen, listen to this enthusiasm. It's awesome. Like, and it's still stuck, which is... Well, it was like... I'm, I'm happy you've discovered this, uh, this joy that we could, uh, we could help you find this in your life. It, it was like, it happened because, like, it was, like, towards the end when I was just kind of, like, fizzling out and overdone with everything. And... Trent Edwards brought us 4-0, like, right when the, we started. So oh, yeah. Like, 
excited. Then we went five and one. I remember where it, like it got to the point where we would like schedule like Sundays specifically to be like we had to find out if there was like a Buffalo Wild Wings around or whatever. Oh yeah, we had to schedule. I think well, there was at yeah, least one or two shows or one or two Sundays we didn't even schedule a show. And then we just went and watched the show. Like in Cincinnati, I think, or something. Like somewhere in Ohio. We just hung out there. And I remember that fucking you went to the bathroom. And I was so excited. They scored a touchdown. You said you could hear me in the bathroom. And I ran into the bathroom. <laughs> and <was> like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, because Mike, um, was, he's from right outside D.C., so he was a huge Skins fan. I'm obviously a huge Bills fan. So we would, like, scout out. We were touring in the fall, like, during football season. We'd, we'd figure out, like, where we were playing – on Sunday, like what city we'd be in, where the closest sports bar was, and then if we should like drive overnight to make it there in time, or like if we could, you know, stay in whatever city we were in previous. So we would have this all mapped out. Um, which I imagine was probably annoying for you at first because you were just like, "Why? Well, I, I don't care." But it's infectious, <laughs> man. We got yeah, yeah. no, I, it, it was, was something good, to do that wasn't fucking diopus. You know, it, <laughs> yeah. it was nice to fucking get it. <laughs> yeah to live, live something, something else out. on the road. And, Seriously, like when um, it's funny because again, I didn't give a fuck, and like when when we when we stopped touring, I didn't have anything to do except obsess about football, and then all of my friends at home were like, they were just what? blown away that what? I was a go to news source because I didn't work. I just sat there and watched ESPN every fucking day. I knew everything. I did like really good in my fantasy football that year. <laughs> Whatever. Um, well, I feel like that's that's how your brain is and, wired, man. Like once you get into something, you just like go a hundred percent. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> like right now, I'm really into relax, I'm not doing anything. I'm like going <laughs> full before. <laughs> oh, all in on like in his room. <laughs> did you, did you say you're not in Buffalo anymore? No, I'm living in uh, living in New York, living in Brooklyn. Oh, but I am in Buffalo. Cur- all right. I am in Buffalo currently right now, uh, just because I came in for the game. Right, right. Oh no, shit. I, um, is that because of the Behold Archibald shit, or did you just end up no, that, there? That, and that, then... that came after, just after I moved. I kind of. So, what are you doing guys. there? Um, I don't know, play music and hanging out, relaxing. Okay. You know? that, <laughs> what, I mean, is that what got you there? Like, what initially got you going there? Um, no, I just wanted to. Uh, that was, I don't Get know, I was like out. New York and just wanted to wanted to do, and I lived in Buffalo all the time, and I just yeah, I was at like a point where I don't know, I just I wasn't doing much in Buffalo except playing in a few bands. And I thought these, those were either things that I could like stop doing or still do long distance. Um, yeah, the timing was right. I just did it. I don't know. It's fun. I, 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 like did it. Look at, I did look up one of the groups you were in and it was like this like hipster version of Slipknot. You had like 700 members in it. Is that, is that right? There's some girl in it and there's like I seven. I wish I was in that band. That sounds sweet. <laughs> hipster Slipknot? <laughs> well, Hipnot. I don't know of any other guests. Yes. <laughs> trying to think of any one any other band that goes around like you guys like literally had i mean i guess ska bands they always have like a bunch of people for their horns and all that shit but there's like a lot of members in the band like so what was that Where, where wearing masks or what what made it <laughs> what, what was the slip that so many members in the band oh, there's like so literally like seven or oh, eight I, yeah okay i know what yeah festival. that's uh Ma- mall walkers is that band yeah, I know what band you're talking about. That's a great yeah, my, my brain was in a different way. As soon as you say Slipknot, I, yeah, I go, my brain goes somewhere else. <laughs> Not fair enough. So, well, what, what, how's your dog, Chris? About? Oh, she's sleeping right over here. There you go, dog. <laughs> Went for a good walk. Like, she was a we, puppy uh, the first time we saw her. Yeah, she's still a puppy. She probably gained a pound. Um, <laughs> after the Bills won, I was in a really good mood, so we took a real long walk today. Like, she got really... <laughs> Nice. I can imagine you probably walked. Well, because then you can listen to WGR on the fucking app the whole fucking time, and you know, <laughs> my week is always co- like the the quality of my week is always correlated with how well we did, you know. And this has been a good year, like besides the antidepressants and everything. This has been generally a good year. <laughs> um, yeah, that's I mean that's that's life in football, man. It really like sets the tone for the rest of your week, which is seriously, seriously. I guess kind of part of the fun of it. Uh, so Chris. Right? Like, it's actually um, a, it's actually oh, really oh. weird that um, this exact day last year was the day we did your interview. Oh no shit! Yeah, so oh, it's weird. so it's very weird that a Psyopus interview fell on today, <laughs> and then Chris Arp surprisingly calls in on Skype. <laughs> Almost like it guess, was guess, guess who told me this was going on? I'm sure it was Keith. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um. Uh. Okay. So I got a couple memories I wrote down here. 
Um, so your hockey <laughs> cards are still on the roof of the Siopus van. Those are like the hockey very first thing you did to initiate oh, yourself. Oh, where? Yeah, there. where did I get those? I forgot about those. Where the hell did those come from? I don't know. Somewhere in Buffalo, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Weird. That's what. Wait, do you still have the van? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, technically, I guess. Not really. <laughs> I, like, oh, two, two good stories on that. Okay, one, it's parked at my grandfather's farm because it's okay. a bunch of land. I had nowhere else to put it. And he was, he used to have he they went they lived through the the depression so they kept all the cars that they ever had and they were like oh, really, nice. really cool. so having another van there really didn't fucking matter um, <laughs> but funny enough there was this moment where I was gonna move down to Asheville North Carolina and uh, there there was this girl I met down there um, from from uh, actually the very first show I did with Hank three in Tallahassee I met her there never hung out with her again but then I ended up meeting her later. And I went down there, and I was like, I'm going to move there. Greg lived down there, and I was like, I, I could do creative shit and just not worry about music. So she then came up to Rochester um, to visit, and the idea was she was going to drive back with the van filled with my shit, and then I was going to go down there after her. And it was like a 12-hour drive. Jesus. Okay, first off, we're trying to get the van oh, like open. I kept feeling these sharp pains. <laughs> there was a hornet's nest in the fucking rearview mirror. And like, here's this girl, I'm like, screaming oh, like a little my- yeah. running around getting bit by hornets um we couldn't get the van to start which is kind of a blessing because there's no way in hell that girl would have survived driving by herself 12 hours and that fucking thing had been sitting there for years right um so yeah it's still there i, I think I, on occasion i always hear from one of the 20 members of of Psyopis, like hey um <laughs> i know someone who might want to buy the van i'm like go ahead go ahead no one ever takes the van i even told my mom like this Go get the junkyard to come pick it up. Take the 50 bucks for it. Go buy something nice. <laughs> whatever, you know. Yeah. But not worth it, I guess. <laughs> no, apparently not. Um, uh, and then um, I remember um, when you uh, we, we were in, you met a, a, a cute girl in, I think it was, I think it was in Nashville. And then we, we went we went on tour and you just like totally fell in love with a girl and so we rented you a car at an airport and then you we were like for a day like a day or two and you just hung out with the girl the oh, entire time. Oh, that was yeah, I had like a baller like minivan with like like crazy lights in the back. I remember that. <laughs> crazy lights, right? And then <laughs> I, you, I, do, I, I remember, the, remember the circumstances. I don't remember like, why you guys were involved in that though. Well, I had to, I I had to rent the car for you. Oh, because I probably wasn't. You can't like, a car until you're 25 or something, right? Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Like, that's so there's weird. some kind of something with it, like whatever. So <laughs> that's right. Yeah. And then well, um, thanks, I baby. remember, I, I owe you. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I've been, I've been keeping count, you know. Uh, like, all right. So, um, then do you remember that like smoking, smoking hot chick in Russia? Uh, her name was like Ola or something like that, and. We were in St. Petersburg, and like there was like the bartenders were dancing on the fucking bar, like they're showing their tits and everything. <laughs> and, and you and like you just like were you're like holy shit, this girl is smoking hot, and J- and J- Jason was just like, I bet I could dance with her, you know. So he's there and he's trying to dance with her, and he's like following her around. Like it was it was great just seeing you put the effort. With this, like, smoking hot Russian chick. Um, yeah, that's like totally against my character to like go yeah. for it like that too i think so it was probably <laughs> some... hilarious to watch me make it as a sorry attempt at boarding some beautiful russian mushroom model or something <laughs> what you could man i mean so you, you know you get the e for F, right um and then <laughs> let's see here um yeah oh and the, so it sounds question. like a failing grade i think what's that <laughs> so that sounds like a failing grade it does um I guess that's all I wrote down here. I got bu- oh, everything else is bill shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mike said, uh, "Chris, make him talk yeah, about Piper." I, I wanted um, them to ask how they got you to even use a computer. <laughs> uh, but it's, <laughs> it's, so it's not even the time. He doesn't reply to any text messages. <laughs> He's just, oh. well, I don't know. You might have changed since then because I haven't uh, tried to text. Right. Um, I'm a little bit better, but yeah, this was, uh, this took some finagling. I did like, you know, borrow somebody's iPad and download Skype on. I did all this today. So it's <laughs> very, very last minute. Your but, shit. Uh, and Keith lurked learning. out. Keith is great a little at lurking bit. people out of the shadows. That was, <laughs> I know. It's like, I, I, I felt bad because as, as you said, and you know, I'm never on Facebook and I, you know, I logged in, you know, 
my for like my monthly like oh let me just make sure there's nothing important in here and I you know had a message from Keith that I you know had been sitting there probably for two or three months and he's like hey do you want to do this and I was just like oh yeah that'd be great like good to hear from you like let me know when and then I didn't check it for another like two months <laughs> and so then I kind of like went back and I realized that I never responded to him and then felt like you know doubly bad and I was like okay I'm really sorry I mean it this time if you still want to do it I'll do it just give me the date I promise I'll check my messages. <laughs> And I downloaded Facebook Messenger on my phone just for that purpose, just for Keith, just so I right. check it. Um, and, and if anyone deserves it, it, it is Keith. That, he <laughs> yeah. is like, he's probably the number one Psyopus fan he's out of everyone. He's definitely the number one Psyopus um, fan of, <laughs> ever. Him, him, and, and, him and, and his like sidekick, Paul. <laughs> I remember they were, they're, they're like, they're, they're, besides Harris, like the first time we met a group of people that were just, overwhelmingly into us was Harrison's group in Fredericksburg, Virginia. And then, um, which reminds me, um, earlier when they were asking about improvising, we used to improvise at the end of um, Bones to Dust. And and it made me remember. Oh, when that's right. Yeah, we were in Richmond, that. Virginia, and we they, the, um, the catering was lasagna, and I got food poisoning, and I just kept shitting and puking, shitting and puking all night. And then we had to go up on stage. And like, like I remember, like we got through this show, and then when the show was done, I was like about to pass out. Um, but so that was in Richmond, and we had the next day off, and we were going by Fredericksburg, Virginia, so we could hang out at um, Harrison's house. But the thing is, again, I'm shitting and puking and shitting and puking. So on the way home, he's stopping at all these random people's houses, people he's never he hasn't talked to in like maybe years or whatever, and he's like, "Hey, how you doing? My buddy's gonna shit. Can he come in?" <laughs> <laughs> on the way from from Richmond to Fredericksburg. Yeah, yeah, and then and then that next day we fortunately had off, and I just slept all day and like recovered. And then we played in um, we played in Baltimore the next day. Um, I just remember there happened. Um, Nick put up a video of that uh, and we of a recording of Kill Us, and I remember I, I saw it, and you can oh, tell yeah. I, I, how sick I was. So, I mean, I was still so fucking drained from just you I, know. Yeah, I definitely remember that show for sure. Yeah, and yeah, but that yeah, that was that was a good fucking moment. Whatever, but so yeah. <laughs> since uh, since Chris is here, um, there's a couple other questions from Keith, like worst or best moments questions, and uh, let's let's run these through with both of you guys here. Uh, what was the worst equipment malfunction that you guys have ever had on stage? Um, me owning the, <laughs> the equipment I had. <laughs> if I could do it all again, one of the top priorities would have definitely been to invest in actually like yeah. good gear. Instead like every, of like every fourth night, it's like why isn't my head working? Why isn't my head working? What's wrong with this thing? It's just like you just <laughs> need to do it. I think that's that's the easy answer. Um, yeah, yeah um, I can't remember any serious ones. I mean, for me, it's like the worst thing that always happens. It's like. You know the double kick pedal. If one of the you know the pedals falls off of the chain, yeah. like comes on. That's happened a couple times. What about uh, uh, worst makes show it impossible promoter? To play. What about worst show promoter experience? <laughs> Jesus, so many bad ones. The, the very the first, what was that band that um, used to tour around in the school bus and they were new metal, and we were like obsessed with them. Oh god, Self that Self band Pant. was so awesome. Self Self that band was so awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, remember, when, remember the first time we played with them was like in Kentucky, and there was like a, 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 a it was a good show, good PA, good audience, everything was fucking pretty sweet, a good mix of shit. But we were still kind of blown away because they, they did stick out like a sore thumb from everyone else, right? Oh, uh, they were, yeah, they were amazing. I mean, they then were we ran into them again. This would have been. What's that? Uh, I was just going to say, whatever year this would have been, like, you know, I guess probably 2009, it was just, like, they were just still doing, like, doing new metal, both, like, musically and, like, visually, but, like, doing yeah. it, like, 110%, like, and doing it so seriously and so well. It was just, it was awesome. And then, yeah, somehow we played, like, a few days later, we played with them again. No, it wasn't a few days later. It was, like, time had passed, and somehow oh. <laughs> we are in West Virginia. We played at this bar that apparently Hank Williams Sr. is the last bar he had ever been to. Oh, and, yeah. And we're playing, and it, it, it wasn't a very big show. It was all right, but, like, how the fuck they got on it. And remember, like, no one was paying attention, so they were trying to do goofy shit, and, like, he was drinking out of the gas can. Remember he had, like, um, a gas can? Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I wish awesome. took a picture of that. 
<laughs> that would have been fucking great. And that really wasn't yeah. the worst promoter. I don't remember any promoting right. story. I do remember, no. this actually, it's not a, a worst promoter story, because I guess the promoter is probably actually really good for, for following through, but it's like the worst show we ever played. That, okay. Or it's like the worst show, I think, that I have personally played, but also maybe like the best show. It was... Uh, it was somewhere in like upstate New York. It was like a little bit first like, first day of like, tour. Yeah, it was like a little bit north of the city, and it was we were starting like a three week tour, and someone had gotten in touch that was like, "Hey, can you play on you know whatever this like Friday night?" We didn't have anything booked, and I think I was in, in school at the time still, so like I had I had class, and it was this kind of thing that we hadn't booked a show because I had like commitments or something that day, and I wouldn't be able to make it. But like whoever these guys were, they got in touch and were like, "Hey, man, we'll like you know pay you guarantee. We really want you to play like." Like, what can you do? What can you do? And so we were, I guess, finally, like, all right, we can leave, you know, you know, I can leave Buffalo this time, and we can leave Rochester this time. We can make it there by, like, you know, maybe 11 p.m. And, you know, they're like, okay, that's cool. It's cool. It's totally cool. So we go there. I think this was actually driving in the rain night, now now that I think about it. I remember we were going, like, you know, through the, the middle of nowhere, uh, like, pouring rain in the mountains, pull up at some, like, little shack of a bar at, like, you know, midnight, like, way, way late, way later than we thought we'd be. And there was, like, the... So there's the bar area, and then the, the stage, or like the showroom, was this like really first, first, first include how fucking packed it was when we showed up. Remember, right. we're like, this is going to be a good show. Well, this place is right. stocked with That's people. What I mean. so the, so, yes, the bar is packed. I mean, there's, yeah, the bar is like, is full. And there's this like show area in in the back. You like go through a door, and it's it basically is like a glorified shed. Um, and so we get in there, it's like the band, I think the last band had just finished like, you know, 20 minutes ago. So it's like, oh yeah, get, you know, get up there, do it. So we load in, um, set up real quick, start playing. And there's literally no one in the showroom. Like, it's the only time in my life that I've ever played zero. Like, everyone just stayed in the bar. Like, and, were, and there was a moment, we were actually, again, talking about improvising. There was a moment, I think, where we were in the middle of a song or something. And, like, I think we all kind of simultaneously realized, like, there's literally no one in this room aside from the four of us. And so then we just started, like, fucking around on whatever, so whatever song we were playing and did, like, a three-minute noise jam or something. <laughs> yeah. um, but then, but so the weird thing was, the, the, these guys who were so stoked to have us, they, like, they paid us our guarantee, gave us, like, a bunch of towels and, like, yeah. three cases of water or something that we were, like, using for the rest of the tour. And they were just like, oh, thanks so much for coming, man, this was awesome. And we're, like, very gracious, and it just, like, did not add up at all. It was, like, how... Yeah, there's, like, four what? people when it started. And then yeah. we got to, like, the first... We're through the first, second song. We all just realized no one is in this room. <laughs> like, like, imagine yeah. you're in a bed... Like, in a bedroom with one door. And, like... It, 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 like, all of a sudden, we're just alone in this room. With no, like, there was no one who could see us at all. Right. And right. it was surreal, dude. It was the beginning of the fucking tour. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but like, yeah, like that was probably. I almost like, I I get where it would be the worst show you ever played. <laughs> it didn't hurt at all, you well, know. I'm well, sure that's, that's like, the thing. It was just so, it was so so bad. weird that it was like kind of awesome, and <laughs> right. you know, and like I said, they were like ha super happy to have us, and like you know, gave us all these nice amenities and stuff. <laughs> they just I don't know if they just like didn't from I I don't know like that was I could not. I thought out, it but. was just they it was hot topic village I, mean, you know, I don't think anyone was into that kind of extreme shit and or they probably whoever played before us was like uh because they're what they were all very new metal ish that when we yeah. showed up they probably just didn't give a flying fuck there, there no thought at least at least the guy who was so stoked about booking us and like really asked us to like come out of our way to play like would at least have watched the show i don't even know where he was right? he <laughs> like it was so, so nutty. But yeah, it's like the only time in my life in any band I've ever been in that I've played with zero people. But it, yeah, it's probably not the worst show I've ever played. So. Uh, that was like a what weird What would be weird your, uh, your best or worst heckler experience? Heckler? I don't know. No one ever heckled Psyopus? No, no. I'm sure they did. It's just... Yeah, but I like, I'm, I'm, nothing profound. I'm yeah, I'm concentrating when I'm doing this. I can't. I don't know what right. everybody else is doing. Feel are... What about uh, yeah, running with homeless people on on tour? That's the Kipsy, New York. Um, homeless people. The only thing I can think of is anytime you play in Poughkeepsie, there's a million homeless people, <laughs> and. When, when we stole the Mortal 2 arcade game, some homeless guy was trying to get me to give him, like, a, a screwdriver while we were stuffing the game in the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, well, I guess you just kind of touch base on uh, what about like run-ins <laughs> with the law? Run-ins with the law. Well, when Jason was in the group, I can't think of anything. Um, we obviously going into <laughs> Canada, right? We couldn't that technically. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it's a run with the law. We never got pulled over for speeding or oh, nothing. Oh, this isn't, this probably isn't a story that's funny to anyone except me, but I do remember there was one time that we were, we got pu- pulled over, we were driving overnight, like, along the southern border, like, near Mexico, and we got, <gasps> you know, like, pulled over to get searched, and I was sleeping in the back, and the one of the border guards was actually, like, a really close friend of mine from middle school. <laughs> and so, like, I, I wake up, and he's shining this light in my face, and he's like, like, dude, like, Bowers? And I was like, whoa, like, what the... And I was asleep, so it, like, totally blew my mind. And then he, and he like, just started working for Border Patrol, so he didn't have, like, any clout. Um, and he's just like, yeah, sorry, man. I mean, they're just gonna, like, you know, tear your thing apart. And we didn't have anything, so it was fine. So I just ended right. up, like, bullshitting with him and catching up for 20 minutes on the side of the road in, like, the middle of the desert. Um, <laughs> but that, that was that was a weird, like, you know, I guess sort of, like, police encounter that had, like, a, a lot of oh, no, that... significance for me. It was a weird, weird small world story. I tell that story probably once a year. <laughs> no, that, really? That, literally, that like, story? he's from Buffalo. We're literally in the middle of Texas driving at midnight. Getting, <clears throat> they got dogs outside of the car and everything to get us all out. But Bowers is in the back sleeping. So his buddy goes in to get him, and he's like, what the fuck? And, like, well, yeah. he just the story. He already told it. But one of, the, one of the things that was great about the band was none of us, like, did any drugs. So, like, whenever we dealt with any of that shit, we just didn't give a fuck. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. The guy's like, am I going to, if I go in the van, am I, he's got the dog, are we going to find anything? We're like, look, we've been driving with this van for years. I don't think you would, but, you know, <laughs> it's possible, I suppose. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. we're, we're always giving, like, people rides and stuff, too. It's like, who knows what shows up. But as far as we knew, we were just like, we were clean, squeaky clean boys. So, right. Well, yeah, Keith, that Keith joined us to say hi to you guys. Oh, nice. What's up, man? What's up, man? How are you yeah, doing? Sure. What's, your, what's your favorite um, Psyopus memory? Beside, I, I remember getting in trouble for playing the house show in your, your house when we had a day off in Orlando. The, the, the promoter for the show the next day in Orlando wasn't happy that we we're advertising a free show in a bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was great. And then the, all the fish guts on the porch the next day from uh, Adam and Lee. Um, fishing? Yeah, they went fishing out the dock of the, of the neighbors the next morning and then decided to flay them all over the, the porch. <laughs> and there was fish guts everywhere. <laughs> and then they tried cooking them on this baby foreman. And we're like, yo, there's hot dogs in the fridge. You know, guys, you don't have to do this. You're not. Flay them. <laughs> the, um, the worst part about um, having all the different bass players was. We, we toured for about a year on, like, the exact same set because the set we played were, like, the easiest songs to learn. So we would learn them, and then we would have a different bass player come along. So we had to just keep sticking on that. We could never progress. We, that entire, like, year or so we were touring from 2008 and 2009, we only played three songs from the new album. I think the entire fucking time because we can never catch up to actually learn another fucking song off the album. Right. In the ass. Yeah, that was that was always a bummer because there were definitely there are tunes on there that I know we have never played and that like, like are fun. I think it would be awesome. But yeah, I want to. I I wish we could play Miss Shy Flower. That song I always wish we could have fucking done. But whatever. Um, but one of my one of my favorite highlights with the bass player thing was when we did the New England Metal Fest and. Um, we got interviewed, uh, by metal injection, but so we had, um, we had, a, a the, the fucking Travis kid on tour with us who just wasn't meshing very well. And, um, and because of that, cause he was acting like he was like, I don't know if I want to be in the band or whatever. So we're like, all right, there's really no loyalty to this kid. So then Mike, who was on the album and we loved to death, um, Mike Horn, he was going to come up to the New England Metal Fest. Now, this kid, the first kid, Travis, was really excited. Like, the one thing he was really excited about was doing the New England Metal Fest. But for some reason, we're just like, well, that's the one show we're not going to let you do. Mike's going to come up and play it because he knows the material better and blah, 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 blah. So he was kind of bummed out. But then at the same time, I think he was happy because he hung out with suffocation the entire time. <laughs> but then, to make it even funnier was, then we, we knew this fucking Brian Kelly was going to be the new bass player. 
So he came to the show and we were doing press photos. So all the photos we took with were with Brian Kelly. So Travis is on tour with us, but Mike's going to play the show and we're going to take press photos with Brian. I mean, that's how much of a joke our fucking bass player situation was. <laughs> all at the same show. But yeah, doing a metal fest was really fun. And if, yeah, if you see the... Um, if you go online and watch the interview with Metal Injection, it's that that shit's just fucking funny, dude. Dude, I can't sit through any Metal Injection interviews because that dude is such a pretentious turd. I can't stand him. Oh, I love him. <laughs> oh, yes, man. No, those guys are so fucking nice. They're super fucking cool. But you know, know. Just, he just his like little comedy bits that he, like I guess are only funny to him. I don't know. It's just why? Why would you have that dude interview people? I don't. I don't understand it. Because it's his show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, those those guys always tr um, treated us very, very well. Those guys were super fucking cool. Um, do you remember when? Oh, here's another good story. Matt Dalbert. Okay, like Jason was far more. Wait, wait, real quick, that. real quick. I when I I met Travis and Brian at the same time. You guys just came over to the house. And I hadn't heard any of the new material, and I haven't met any of the new guys. And I kept calling Brian Matt because he had not put out a press release that he was in the, in the band. Right. So he's like, why do you keep calling me Matt? <laughs> oh, this was a singer, singer Brian you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Because, yeah. like, um, we, try, we tried out Matt Dalbert. And he's this kid, like, I went to high school with, and he fucking sucked in high school, dude. He really did. And, like, I try to be cool, but there's – I have no problem saying how much that kid fucking sucked. But anyways, the so time passes, and we had played a show with Harrison at the Penny Arcade, and his and Matt's band, Burning, uh, Burn Everything, was playing. Now, I'm in my 30s at this point, and – Every, you, know, you figure everyone's like chilled out and has become cooler and no one's so negatively quirky. And Matt comes up to me. He's like, hey, man, if you ever need anyone to sing, you know, I, I'd, be, I'd love to do it. Well, that tour happened to just be Harrison's last tour with us. So I had it in the top of my mind that we could ask Matt to do it. And like um, Matt was clever and he did. He, his voice was the kind of voice we would have wanted in the band. But everything else about him really sucked ass. And, like, I was trying to be open-minded, and we I really – I was far more worried about solving the problem because I was just always stressing about the shit. But we brought the guy up for, a, up for an interview, and we had given him plenty of time to learn the song, or at least by our standards. Like Jason was saying, like, we were all, like <laughs> – you had to just keep up with a speeding, you know, hamster wheel. And that kid couldn't even get on the hamster wheel. So he was coming, and he was, like, getting really drunk. And he didn't know the words. And, like, <laughs> Jason and I are sitting in the room. And I'm like, all right, let's just try this again. So the way he wanted to win, win, win us over to, like, make up for his shortcomings of not spending time learning the song was he was going to jump around the jam room and scream in my face, like, you know, like, all about performance and shit. So here I am. I'm just sitting on a chair playing a song. He's, like, in, like, in my face going, like, you know, like, really giving it to me. And I'm like... We stopped the song. I'm like, what are you doing, dude? <laughs> so he ends up leaving, and I'm just like, you know, I, I'm like, I, I just wanted to solve the problem. And Jason's just telling me, dude, I'm, I'm telling you, I don't like that kid. <laughs> I'm telling you, he's not the one, man. Oh, there's well, just I, nothing wrong with that kid. I, well, that was, and he was, it was right. very It was very cut and dry. Like, you know, if you show up and you're just not prepared, like blatantly unprepared, it's kind of like, you know, I don't really care how much I like you or how good you are. It's like, if you just can't get it together to do this, like, one thing, then, like, or it's clear that you're not even trying, you know, you're showing up, you know, drunk and, like, you know, it's, this is, like, I don't know, it's stuff that we were taking very seriously at the time, you know? And, if yeah, it's just, like, immediately, like, at least I could tell that, like, he wasn't taking it as serious as we were, and it's just, like, so I knew, I was like, hey, we don't, we don't have time for this, man, like, this isn't gonna end well. Right. Well, it, yeah, uh, but then, then the problem was, um, we were, because Metal Blade offered us all these fucking great tours if we put a deadline for our album to come out. So we had a deadline, and we're like, we're about to go into the studio, and so we did this press release that Matt's going to be our singer. Um, we had just done a show with him where he sang half of the songs, and the rest of the set was instrumental. And then he just wouldn't talk to any of us. And we'd call, and he's just like, he just fell off the face of the planet. So... 
then we had like two weeks before he we went in the fucking studio. And by the grace of God, fucking um, Brian Woodruff came along. Um, one of my little brother's friends tried out for the band or tried out with me um, screaming. And I'm like, and just out of like, you know, just trying to be open minded. And I'm like, do, do you happen to know anyone else? And he, he suggested Brian and Brian ruled and Brian came in and like, he, literally, it was a blessing that he came in literally two weeks before we were about to go in the studio. And then one of the funny, one of the thing that even got me going on this was uh, how um, our first show was the Knitting Factory. So we go on to the studio and I think we literally had a show at the Knitting Factory in New York City like the next day <clears throat> because um, I like to make bad decisions. <laughs> you know, like it would have been <laughs> we had like a month off, you know, <laughs> but I, I did that with the last album too because um, I don't learn from those bad decisions. So um, we, I remember we're playing and, and we opened up with Horror Meat Liar. And when the song, you know, usually the front man kind of like rallies everyone around, kind of directs everything. <laughs> So here's our first show. We probably, I wouldn't be surprised if we didn't ever rehearse with Brian because that would just seem to be the MO with the band. But, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but like, I'm sure we did. Um, but we get up there and after we, the song's done, Brian just is like standing there looking at me. <laughs> like, like, I'm like, I'm the fucking proud, man. What are you doing? He's like, oh, okay. And uh, yeah, <laughs> he eventually figured it out, but that was pretty fucking cute. Whatever. Uh, good time, great oldies. Uh, I just want to remind everyone that if you share this video, you have a chance to win a, a Locust mini disc. Okay, oh. sorry about that. Guys. <laughs> uh, I was uh, I was hanging out with Paul the other day, and he had brought up something from a long time ago. It was when Psyopus, Into the Moat, Animosity, everything falls together at uh, Nice Leagues in Daytona. Okay. And, okay. Uh, after after the show, uh, we're just fanboying the shit out of you. And uh, <laughs> you guys, you guys got a hotel, which I think was probably like a big treat for the tour. Right. And um, um, Harrison and the Jefferson drummer went to like a strip club. Yeah. Really, really sleazy, and something about him. Um, Big fat like, woman. You know, black girls, asshole, <laughs> stripper, something like that. It was really nasty and funny. Yeah. And, um, and, the, and he, the, um, the drummer, uh, Daniel, he, um, Daniel, Daniel. that whole group, the, uh, the, um, that, that, that whole group was just like hysterical. Like Harrison and his group of friends are just like some of the funniest fucking people you can ever hang out with. And, um, but Daniel, one of them, he, he had a real good sense of humor about it, but he had like some kind of dish, uh, condition where he was like just small he was like very short very small and he went to the strip club and apparently this just huge black woman was like you know huge woman who could just like suffocate him with her breath was like sticking i guess he was sticking his head into her asshole or whatever <laughs> well it got i think it got better because um me and paul were just kept talking your ear off the whole night and you had some girl at the hotel room and she's like, yeah, we're going to go streaking in the in the ocean and all this kind of stuff. And we're like, yeah, 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 yeah. So about uh, Immigrant's Puzzle. <laughs> and then <laughs> finally at the end of the night, I'm like, I think he was trying to fuck this girl, man. We were totally cock the shit out of him. Didn't even realize it. Man. Yeah. I believe it. <laughs> it couldn't have bothered you that much if you don't remember. So <laughs> don't be too bad. <laughs> She was the one, too. I swear to God, she was the one. <laughs> no, no I, I don't remember that very much. I do remember, like, um, that venue was pretty cool. And there was, like, sand on the, the ground. You know, like, there was sand at the actual stage. That was, that, I love playing that. Place. We played in Florida quite a bit. It was great, because you could like, drive, like, an hour to an hour and a half to the next big city, and it was, like, nothing. Do you, oh, Keith, did you go to the show at the... the screwdriver or whatever it was in i think it was in like st petersburg or something it was like in the back room of like this novelty t-shirt sticker store does that sound it's not ringing a bell uh, i only went to daytona port orange orlando i think it's the only times i've seen you. oh georgia at uh swayze's oh no shit marietta georgia right yeah swayze's 
but uh, there were a number of ozone CDs. Was a fun show. What? What was that? Um, uh, ozone CDs. It oh, was like yeah, 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 and that was um, that was in Orlando, right? Uh, Altamont, but close by. Okay. It was like and a I, record store. Yeah, and the, the support bands were just garbage and had nothing to do with metal, Psyopus, or this tour. It was just like friends of the owner of the venue or something. It was ridiculous. All right. I don't remember uh, playing the show. I just remember showing up. <laughs> <laughs> so what's I feel like those are, some, those are some of the best shows when there's like the bands that play like should not at all be on the bill. Because like, you know, when we're touring and you're just seeing like three or four like metalcore bands every single night like it's the weird ones that like don't belong they really stand out and like stick and stick like cell pan or whatever you know right so, right like, those those shows i think are always like the most fun just because they're like diverse and weird like i'd much rather watch something like terrible and strange right. than like just something like boring right i i remember um do you remember okay so psyopus was generally the antithesis of like the meathead hardcore scene yeah. but um now that, breakdowns, no nothing, just yeah, and and because of the burning halo, we had a guitar that tuned really low, so we used to open up shows every once in a while playing the Acacia Strains Car Bomb. So oh, just, yeah, I remember. And some people would be like really into it, and then like bummed when they realized we weren't like the yep. Acacia Strain or whatever, like that kind of. <laughs> No, I remember specifically in California, I think it was like Santa Cruz, like when we started playing that, like you saw the the scenes for kids with their hair, you know, hair over their eyes and they just started like opening it up and spin kicking and all this shit. And then we did our thing and like they're, you know, they're waiting for it to come back. (laughs) (laughs) And they, I remember specifically, like they had attitudes about it. They were so fucking let down. (laughs) Yeah. So what's the weirdest place that you two ever played a show together? The weirdest place. Uh, uh, Paul's bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I don't think I was there for that. That was, that was, uh, yeah, that was, that was quite a long, long time ago. Um, I mean, there, we were never against playing anywhere. <laughs> yeah, you know, we played this. It was actually an awesome show, but it was... Um, when we were on that that tour, the U.S. tour with Fucked with Facts, and we were in, uh, we were in like Palo Alto or something, like somewhere in the Bay Area, and it was just this like enormous like print shop or like WeWork or like workspace or something. Metallica Friday, know. we did uh, Creeping Death. Yeah, night. yeah, like that. I mean, that show was amazing, but I have no idea like what that place we played was. Like it was in no it was way, like shape, a or form venue. Literally played in a Kinkos. It wasn't Kinkos, <laughs> but it could have just. It was. Been. It was. It was like a weird, like enormous sort of like hip. Yeah, like print shop i guess i don't know if you could like rent out space to like do your own like print art or just go there like simply do like office stuff or i don't know it was like a really bizarre space but that was like an amazing show that was super fun but also like yeah that sticks out to me it's just like, uh, was there a mike, show there mike horn says that weird barn up in maine that wasn't on the map oh, oh yeah i remember that another guy I gave you his coat that. too he gave you a really nice carhartt coat because we were going to maine in february and you should bring a coat <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yep, yep, it was February, we went up to Maine, we are about to go on tour up there, and I just didn't bring a jacket. Yeah, it was like northern Maine, like, you know. And it was snowing hardcore. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there was that weird, we played, I think we played in Portland, Maine, and then we played the next day in, like, literally the middle of fucking nowhere in some fucking... I wish I could remember what that place is, like, what town that was or whatever. Like, I just, I think about that, like... Surprisingly often, I just can't dial up like what the hell the name of that place was. How, dude? That's the underground scene, man. There's just, just people like yeah. shit everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, right. And well, I, they, I, they also, I think that was a Thunderdome tour. I didn't book that show. I think Thunderdome took care of that. Well, I remember there being flyers like at the barn for other like you know like legitimate shows. You know, I think like on Earth was playing there or something. So it was like in some weird way, shape, or form like a legitimate venue, but it was just like kind of like cobbled together in the middle of the woods in like Mike, northern Maine or something. Mike said that was the night the Skins announced Jim Zorn as head coach. I hated my life, LOL. <laughs> was there anything else you saw in the comments, Dylan? <laughs> See, my comment? comments were not uploading like they should have been, so I just got them all. Um, 
Mike also said that they had a homeless guy on stage in Tampa, if he recalls. Yeah. Oh, there's an amazing picture of that guy. I forgot about that. I think yeah. was, was Justina with us. There's like an I, oh, I gotta try. There's an amazing picture. Remember. It's like black and white, and it's him on stage, just like like doing this, and he he almost just looks like he he, he belongs there or something. <laughs> like like Rocky on the top of uh... he's, he's he was just like yeah like a kind of like a scrawny like gaunt dude who like I guess just wandered in and and just got up on stage and he just has this really like powerful like serious like <laughs> thing. And I think like Brian's in the background and you're in the background. It's Oh god, I, yeah. I, I don't remember like the incident, but I remember the picture. Right. I remember. Then, um, I loved the press photos we did in. I think it was outside of Cleveland, and we were at that venue that had the boat inside of it. Oh yeah, Tennessee. And we did like, yeah. high end press photos. Like all t- we were all standing in our underwear, <laughs> like on the top <laughs> Just of it. On this, on this pirate ship. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then in, in Russia, you guys all stood back and watched while some like old Russian guy like slapped me while I was naked with a broom or no with a with a, a uh, with the leaves, yeah, yeah, the, <laughs> yeah. It was just some kind of crazy thought, branch. It was so You're horrible like, because the guy we we're in a, a, a steam hot. Wait, what do they call it? Like a, uh, like a Russian bathhouse. Yeah, it was a bathhouse, and um, they had this guy who would like go put you through this like uh, you know treatment or whatever. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to do it. So I had to like take off all my clothes, go into this fucking room. And it's this big fucking burly fucking Russian guy who doesn't speak any English. And like, I'm, and, and it was really fucking hot in there. Yeah, it was like a and sauna, like, pretty it, much. What's that? I said it was like a sauna, right? That you were yeah, in, and it was much. like the hottest sauna ever. <laughs> like, like, yeah, the towel, but if any of my skin touched the wood, it would burn. And meanwhile, this guy is like pushing on me so hard. Like it wasn't comfortable. It didn't feel good. But there, I had no defense because the guy didn't speak English. I'm alone in this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we were all watching you through the – because the, like the door was like glass. So we were all watching you and, and laughing. <laughs> and the, be- the best was when you were getting whacked. Like, you were face down and getting whacked, and then the dude, like, gestures that you have to, like, turn over and tries to, like, you know, flip you over. Because we didn't realize he was going to do the same thing, like, on the front of your body, just, like, just smack you in the dick with, like, these palms. And we're just like, holy shit, like, I thought he was just doing his back. And then he just, yeah, like, went to town. They do it a different way in Russia, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's, like, an actual, like, common, common thing, though. I think that's, like, that's not... Like a weird thing for them to do. Like that's regular ed. If you go to a Russian bathhouse, like that's what you do. <laughs> but obviously, none of us had ever been to one before. Right. Huh. All right. Oh, well, uh, thanks for joining us, Chris. Um, we're gonna proceed on to the Would You Rather segment. Is this starting to get pretty right, late man. now? Hey, nice talking to you, uh, Bowers. Uh, <laughs> it's good up. seeing you, man. Do you have no a surprise. new phone, man? No, same phone number. I well, I have tons of new phones, so I I don't have your number anymore. So oh, jeez, all right. Well, do you have the same phone number? Yeah, yeah. All right. And I live well, in Binghamton now, so I'm not that far from you. Oh no, we're close, man. Yeah, uh, hey, people, you are not here. You go up to the, up to the city all the time. It's funny when people say up to the city because when I lived in Ro- Rochester, I'm sure when you lived in Buffalo, you could say back to the city, and it meant the city you're from. No, right. everyone goes. <laughs> yep, to the goes, city goes here, to the city. So whatever. You you guys should start yeah, a band again. Our, <laughs> I think we, we, already, already, we already we already have yeah. a been there, <laughs> done start another one. <laughs> yeah, right, if anything, like, fuck. It's like we, I, for, I, I we already laid like, all this all this groundwork and put in all this time and energy. It's like we're not gonna start something new. If anything, just release <laughs> we'll just the old Siopa shit on vinyl, dude. You got to put that Siopa shit on vinyl. Yeah, we got to put together a Siopa album just to put it on only vinyl. Do it. <laughs> vinyl exclusive. I'll buy it. All right. Yeah, so just, I can't even just it. release the old albums on vinyl, actually, and then let them sell. Talk out. to Guy, man. Tell Guy to just do shit. <laughs> you guys, go, Guy, do this. I get ten. Uh, I if I do like, all the footwork, I get ten percent. <laughs> I think that I I think that's that's what we what we need is someone to do the footwork. <laughs> all right, later, man. Yeah, right, later, Chris. I'll just, Whatever, that's fine. I don't care. Okay, bye. Good talking. <laughs> All right, see you, dude. <laughs> All right, Keith, you want to hang out or you want to? You want us to get, drop off too? Uh, I'm gonna drop off and get a drink. <laughs> All right, Keith. I'll, take I'll, you. Uh, I'll still be in the chat. I'll be watching. All right, later, dude. <laughs> cool. All right, see you, Keith. <laughs> All right.
But now that we've got you alone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Quick, drop out, drop out. <laughs> was, was, there, was there any other questions in the comments you want to hit before we get to this? Um, Matt said something about, uh, I'm not sure if it was me being young and not noticing, but I never really saw much Psyopus merch here in Australia. Was that a thing or was I just unfortunate and oblivious? Uh, I mean, I wouldn't, I mean, we wouldn't go out of our way to distribute merch in Australia. I don't even know how the hell we would do that. So, uh, <laughs> it probably wasn't like, yeah, it probably wasn't available unless somebody there was, you know, it was on purpose. It buying it from like indie merch or something or putting it there yeah. but yeah i mean that we we wouldn't have done that so it doesn't surprise me if it, it never made it over there i do believe that there is still size small and like youth medium shit on uh indie merch. yeah chris posted a bunch of stuff a bunch of t-shirts i remember going uh, yeah. through indie merch and like stumbling across it in the clearance room for like I think it was like four dollars for a shirt or something like that but... yeah i think when we had when we stopped touring heavily it was kind of a you know, it was like a little abrupt, so we just had all this merch left over. You know, it, it was it wasn't this kind of thing where like we just like ordered a bunch, I think, because we were just constantly touring. And then at, at one point when we were just kind of like we like can't can't do this as often or as crazy anymore. Um, yeah, we just had like boxes and boxes of t-shirts. I'm sure indie merch also had boxes and boxes of t-shirts. Right on. So uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Would You Rather. Uh, a little bit. Refresh my memory about the I get a choice between two things. Uh, basically, it's a choice between two of the most horrible things that could ever happen to a person in oh, life ever. <laughs> okay, <laughs> completely hypothetical. Gotta pick, <laughs> gotta pick which one. Yep. All right. So, <laughs> all right. Let's, uh, let's hear it. Hit me. We get all these. Uh, we get all these questions from different groups and stuff that we post in, and basically, I say like, you know, hey, post post some would you rather's, and then people leave stuff in the comments, and then we pick and choose from what ones are there that are humorous to us to hear <laughs> musicians talk about. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I mean, if you absolutely have to pass, you know, that, that's fine, because some of these are just unanswerable, but <laughs> just uh, try your Spence best. That's killing me. All right. <laughs> All right, so uh, would you rather eat a light bulb every day, but when you poop, it's fine, or would you rather eat light bulbs every day, or, or would you rather eat whatever you want and then poop a light bulb? Um, I guess I'd probably poop the light bulb because I like eating. I like food, so <laughs> I, I wouldn't want to give that up. <laughs> would so, you rather drown? Bulb. Would you rather drown in piss or vomit? Uh, piss. <laughs> it's close, it's close enough to water. You know, yeah, like. and it's sterile. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Not that it's gonna matter when I'm <laughs> dead. But... <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, would you rather? Would you rather pee every time you stand up or shit every time you sit down? Um, <laughs> shitting, shitting when you sit down is funnier, so I'll go, I'll go with that. <laughs> All right. Um, would you rather secrete a small amount of shit from your skin like sweat every day or turn into a full-fledged were-turd one night a month on a full moon? Oh, definitely were-turd. <laughs> that seems easier easier to deal with and, uh, yeah, and also just fun and weird. I don't know. <laughs> Would you rather have two sphincters on the palms of your hands or the bottoms of your feet? Bottoms of my feet. <laughs> Any reason? Because they're easier to hide? Yeah, I think so. I mean, not that many people see the bottoms. I do a lot of stuff with, the, you know, shake people's hands, touch stuff. Like I bet your you know. feet would smell like shit. <laughs> That's, I mean, they already do, so, like, it's not, not, not that big a deal. <laughs> uh, pubic hair for teeth or teeth for pubic hair? Teeth for pubic hair. Uh, just again, I'd wanna, I want to. don't want eating to be a struggle. You know? <laughs> uh, would you rather have a nipple-sized penis or penis-sized nipples? Uh, that's penis-sized nipples. <laughs> Probably. You look intrigued. Yeah, I mean, it's it's more it's more obvious. Everyone sees it, but it's also I don't know. You, just, you, you get used to it, probably. You know. <laughs> All right, uh, this one's difficult. Would you rather watch your parents have sex for the rest of your life or join in once to stop it? Um, I mean, is that literally all I'm doing for the rest of my life? Or is it just something I have to, like, watch once a day? I think the way I like to think of it is, like, how screen-on-screen -on, -screen on TV works. 
is like you just always constantly have a little it's, in your vision it's always a little box of your <laughs> fucking in the corner of it. Um, I think I could learn to ignore that, or just <laughs> at least like to at least tune it out, even if it's always as long as I can function and do other stuff. Uh, I would live with that, I guess. <laughs> hey, so since you're a foodie guy, uh, would you rather eat chocolate pudding that tastes like poop? Or poop that tastes like chocolate pudding. Uh, poop that tastes like chocolate pudding. I don't want to eat anything that tastes like poop. <laughs> what's the What's the point? <laughs> it should be eating a turd. <laughs> anyway, I think it tastes good. People, people eat weirder stuff than that. Dylan, was that your uh, Chinese star one the other day? What was that one? I cannot. Uh, no, remember I, I remember it because I thought I heard it at the bar. And it made me laugh really hard. <laughs> uh, would you rather shit five hundred tons of mayonnaise? Or one Chinese star. Or one what? Or one Chinese star. What is a Chinese star? Like a throwing star. Star? Ninja star. Yeah. Oh, the mayonnaise. <laughs> could you imagine <laughs> shitting 500 tons of mayonnaise? There's I no holding just... that back and doing it gently. Like, that's just right, like... I figure it just it happens for however many days it happens, and then you're done. You know, it's not... It's gross and uncomfortable, but not not shredding my asshole open. <laughs> require any surgery after to fix anything. So, would you rather shower in fish tank water for the rest of your life, or have raisins for fingernails? Raisins for fingernails. What? Say, run that one by one more time. That's like that's a little heady. Would you rather shit? shit whatever. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm stuck on the shit ones now. Would, <laughs> would you rather shower in fish shower tank in water fish. for the rest of your life? Or have raisins for fingernails. That one's really weird. I can't even imagine what having raisins for fingernails. Would be like. <laughs> I guess raisins for fingernails. I don't know. It's, it seems kind of harmless, right? <laughs> uh, you can only listen to one artist for the rest of your life, and it's Nickelback or ICP. Oh, ICP. <laughs> Everybody says that so casually. Oh, yeah. ICP. <laughs> I think that everyone yeah. just secretly yeah. listens to ICP all the time. <laughs> I mean, or Nickelback. There, there, there were points in my life where I not so secretly listened to ICP, so <laughs> <laughs> that was not too much of a stretch. Uh, would you ra rather fight a teenage bear or three ostriches on cocaine? Uh, I guess the ostriches. Do they get weapons? Uh, no, bare hands. Bare hands, ostriches. Uh, would you rather have your mom, mom or dad catch you masturbating, or would you rather catch them? Uh, I'd rather have them catch me. Uh, who is the one person you would want to be stuck in a Chinese finger trap with for the rest of your life? Uh, wow. Could you imagine being stuck in a finger trap with Chris Arp for the rest of that's, your life? I mean, that's the... <laughs> <laughs> That's the first place my mind went. My answer might be, as much as I love you, Chris, not Chris, is my answer. <laughs> I mean, that's what being in Psyopus was like, man. <laughs> you, just, you just described it. Would you rather have vaginas for ears or penises for fingers? <laughs> Can I still hear out of my vagina? Is my hearing affected at all? Nope. Nope. Well, I'll go with that then. Vagina <laughs> ears is all right. Man, that's a lot of maintenance for an ear, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you could. There'd be like what a week out of the month that you couldn't hear because you have a damn. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or you could just let it ride if, if you don't want to do that. Just. <laughs> uh, would you rather have your body found on a pile of sex toys or naked pictures of Guy Fieri? Uh, I mean, I don't know. I guess well, I take pictures of Guy Fieri. That one's just that's a funny, <laughs> funny reveal. Once you're dead, I can see sex the headlines toys, now. <laughs> sex toys seems kind of like norm, a little too normal to be funny. It's like yeah, people, people on sex toys. That's real. <laughs> Naked pictures of Guy Fieri though. <laughs> like, <laughs> Where did he get those? <laughs> yeah. uh, would you rather have no penis or five penises? Where are they located? In the same area. They all, it's just like a pack in the same of area? Pack of hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nathan's. Maybe... Bun size. Maybe none. Maybe no penis. <laughs> Be a Ken doll? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> uh, would you rather cut off one of your fingers 
or pay off, pay five thousand dollars of your own money for the person you hate most to go on vacation. Oh, I'd pay the money. I need fingers. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, would you rather live forever or die in the next five minutes? Uh, guess it's usually de it usually determines on how the interview is going to go for the rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess I would, I would go live forever. I feel like I could, I could make that work. Uh, would you rather pop one of your testicles like a grape? Or eat a monster turd produced by Gabriel and Glacius with a fork and knife at slow pace. Eat the turd. <laughs> I'll eat the turd. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll take the turd, please. <laughs> um, would you rather fuck a jellyfish or a cactus? Um, what's, what, what's the inside of a cactus like? I don't know. Uh, is it a spine on the outside? It's, I'll, it's I'll illegal. <laughs> I'll take my chances with the inside of the cactus. Uh, it won't sting me at least. And the last one: Would you rather fuck your mother in your girlfriend's body, or fuck your girlfriend in your mother's body, or significant other? I'm not assuming your sexual orientation. <laughs> you can use your pass on this one. I mean, that's what's the fun if you're not going to answer. That's a well, team player. Yeah, um, I guess, yeah, girlfriend and mother's body, I guess. You can, oh, you can close, rough. you can close your eyes, right? <laughs> that's, that's an easy, easy fix. It all feels the same in the dark. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> all right, well, I appreciate you hanging in there for that. Um, and thank you again for coming on the show. Uh, we usually only have two more questions to ask, and um, one of them is, do you have, or, like, as you can tell, we like to do giveaways on the show. Meanwhile, if you share this, you get a free, you could be in a running for a free mini disc, <laughs> Locust mini disc. Um, do you have anything laying around that you might be willing to send to get given away on the show? Like any old Behold stuff, or I doubt you have any Sciopa stuff laying around, but... Um... I don't know. I can, let me let me think about it. I, not that I can think of offhand, but if I if I got anything good, I'll happily uh, happily send it your way. Right on. Thank you very much. And yeah, of um, course. the last question we usually ask is, what's what has been the most fulfilling moment of your musical career? Most fulfilling. Um, I don't know. I think. I mean, when Syopus, when we went to Russia, that was a pretty pretty cool thing like just i, just, I remember to, there being just because you got to see chris like, get whipped in the dick with a palm tree <laughs> <laughs> that was the most fulfilling moment of my, <laughs> we're all leading up to that moment um no, i think that was just like one of those moments where like you know life didn't seem like real it was kind of like oh i'm just because i you know decided to start playing drums when i was a kid and now i'm like somebody's like brought me to russia to just have fun and like and do this thing. It was just it was like a very, very surreal. Like, yeah, is this yeah, really life? Imagine. Like, how did how did this happen? And I think that's just such like an extreme case of that. Like, you know, I think everybody has everybody you know who tours and plays music has little moments like that. You know, it's like the first time I toured across the U.S. You get that, but this was sort of like the extreme of it. It was like, like how the hell did I get here, man? This is like just because I like playing music and that's it. So, what are your pretty parents, fulfilling what do your moment. parents think about music that you make? Uh, my mom goes, my mom has probably seen every band I've been in at least once, which oh, is, awesome. uh, which is pretty cool. Um, <laughs> I don't think she ever listens to it, like, <laughs> you know, in the car, regardless, regardless of whether it's Psyopus or something you know, more accessible <laughs> or to her taste. Like, I don't think she ever like, you know, pops in a, a disc or whatever, but, uh, yeah, I mean, she's like always been super supportive and I mean, we'll still just come out to whatever shows. Um, yeah, so I don't know, cool. she's, she's happy and. Yeah, I'm proud of me because she's a good mom. <laughs> so, <laughs> right on. Well, uh, thanks so much for joining us tonight. I really appreciate it. I know it. It really helped. Uh, Keith was really looking forward to it, and <laughs> I'm sure it was a fulfilling moment for him when you decided that you actually <laughs> wanted to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and I got I got back on Facebook for you, Keith. So, but thank you, uh, thank you for having me and for uh, for asking me to do this. It was fun, guys. Yeah, thank you very much. Talk to you yeah, next time. Thanks, buddy. All right, later, dudes. Yep. Are you going to say it or am I going to say it, Dave? 
Such a nice guy. <laughs> he was so nice. Nicest of niceness. I didn't know how the uh, the Woody Rathers were going to go over well with him or not, but took it like a champ. Yeah, I was curious to see how you were going to execute that as well. Because <laughs> it's it's always harder with like the the calm, somber people, you know. It was um, I mean, it was a pretty full interview with with Chris Collar and Keith being on, so it was. Yeah, it well, went I mean, well. Keith, Keith wasn't in Psyopus, but he's just the biggest fan. <laughs> I mean, he gets recognition for being the biggest fan. <laughs> That's awesome. You are now on YouTube I'll as the him, biggest fan of Psyopus. I'll make him a shirt. <laughs> Just make the thumbnail, Keith. <laughs> Keith, oh, make the thumbnail you. All right, so I just want to remind everybody who's still watching, next week, Lex from Daughters will be on the show. It is a monumentous occasion because Daughters does not do a lot of press. And. Monumentous. Monumentalist. <laughs> Montu- Montumistalist. It, it's going to be an affair. It's going to be awesome. So don't miss that. Um, How nervous are you? Actually, like. <laughs> I don't get nervous anymore. It just feels like everybody's normalized people now. But this might be the determining factor about how weird. I can get <laughs> <laughs> that or um, I know Vincent from Acacia strain would, that's going to be the interview. If I ever land that interview, that's like my, my Moby Dick. You know? <laughs> if I get Vincent and I can sit through it without being completely weird. It'd be You've cool. said that before too. And I, I, I believe it. Yeah. That, uh, I thought, I thought deal was going to be a, a pretty, yeah. intense one but it, it turned out to be so really awesome nice. he was so nice and he was drunk as shit <laughs> he was super <laughs> drunk <laughs> I'll send you a guitar cab yeah he's like oh shit I'll send you a pedal I don't give a shit <laughs> didn't receive anything <laughs> didn't receive anything from them <laughs> that's alright though Yeah. Um, I don't think he was in charge of that yeah, shoot, you know what maybe I'll send DL a message like, hey man, where's the guitar cab? <laughs> hey, you... <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, so tune in next week for Lex Daughters. Ooh, yeah, we might so have to take a the sunsets. What's that? Also, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The sunsets, amazing fucking band. I, you know, it's it's really hard to pick between As the Sunsets and Daughters, but it's gotta be Daughters, you know. This it just it's um. Do we have anything after that or no? Yes, Knife the Glitter. Entire band okay. will be on to talk. Yeah, we'll actually have everybody this time. And audio, for those who turned in last time. That we did <clears throat> audio. Um, so yeah, that, that's all we got for you. Go to, so what, we go got the 4th the fourth and the 29th? Or the... Where am I at? The 5th and the 12th. No, I don't know. Sundays. Every Sunday, we have a show. And then I imagine you're going to want to go on break. <laughs> yeah, maybe you know. Let's take a fucking week off, man. For the holidays. Oh, is the holidays coming up? What is it? Thanksgiving. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck it. We'll have no show after Knife of Glitter. I, I need a fucking vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's so uh, it's so difficult now because all I do is post and post and post and post and post. Like I, know, I can't even get on I'm Facebook like... to enjoy myself anymore. Like I, it's so it's always it's work now. Like. Don't do what you love as work, people. I'll tell you that. It's uh, horrible. Because I, I, I can barely promote for Sheep's Clothing anymore just because I'm like, fuck, this is so annoying. To... My fingers just do it. If I pick up my phone, I'm constantly just like promoting some shit and not even paying attention to what I'm doing. It's that's weird. sad, man. I mean, it's 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 sad. I really want to get out to the Kava Bar, though, man. That's I had a good time when I came out. You guys got plans for Halloween? Uh, yeah, we have children. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, they go to bed, <laughs> don't they? No, I got to hit up that all, that all you can drink again, because I don't want to spend a bunch of money. Oh, every Monday we have uh, live musicians there now. And this Monday, actually, tomorrow. Is you got, Monday. like, an accordion player, yeah, right? he's awesome, dude. He does, like, Gorg- Gorgello Berdello songs or what? I, can't, I don't know how to Gorgolo Berdello. I can't pronounce it. That's awesome. But yeah, he's really good, and it's all you can drink, twenty dollars. So, rolling out, Billy. Yeah, I'll talk to Ashley. She supports it. 
Oh, oh Ashley has to work tomorrow night. It sucks. Womp womp. All right. Take us out, Dylan. <laughs> See ya.